I'm in uh, Wickford at an event organised by Big Lottery Fund and I've just met up with uh, Barry Langmead who's taken over organising uh, Wickford Carnival and that interests me for another reason because uh, with John Popham we're doing some work on Celebration 2.0. How can uh, social media, whether it's the camera in people's phone in people's pockets or cameras or whatever, um, help uh, community events, fun events, um, engage people uh, more widely, how can you use the media to promote and so forth. I got into a conversation with uh, Barry about uh, the slightly fuddy-duddy image of carnival amongst a lot of people at the moment. Is that the case and uh, how might uh, digital media, Facebook and so forth change it? I, I, I mean, I, I, I'm hearing a lot of things from, certainly from the young fraternity, the young students that are seeing Carnival in, in something that they had to turn up to, not necessarily because they wanted to turn up. Nowadays where we've got this whole multimedia communication, um, we're interested to actually start to show that Carnival 2012 actually can be more fun and actually a lot more interactive. So, you know, it is about taking us into that media of utilising all that, all that opportunities, Twitter, and 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 putting uh, videos on uh, YouTube, uh, X, Y, Z. So, so we're heading for this uh, our date on the 15th of September. Um, we're equally trying to now create the atmosphere with local schools by getting the young fraternity in, but not necessarily just stopping from that. But equally, we want to go and visit. Um, old uh, the older generation of the people community that type of thing to show that we're about and it is a community event and um what actually happens at the festival traditionally i know it's been going for some years hasn't it absolutely yeah this uh, this year will be uh, 94 years um and and obviously as a carnival there's there's possessions we invite uh, local sports groups uh, as well as it can be businesses and that that starts off around about midday and, and ends up into a, a park called Neverton Park in Wickford. It's um, behind the uh, fire station. And there we, we, we have a bit of a town show. So about um, arena displays and a lot of community uh, stalls turn up to be able to obviously raise some money for them. Uh, we're trying to uh, promote it as a free event this year. We will be selling programmes and obviously trying to get... The, the, the biggest thing is about the cost of running these events. Most people think that uh, you can put it on for nothing, but to run a, a, the Wickford Carnival, potentially it's, it's about £7,500. So, so because of you have to pay for road closures and public liability licences, and you can go on and on and on, um, and, and most people are quite surprised how much it actually takes. Ultimately, it takes you 12 months to get to that point, you know. So, um, wh where, does the, where does the money come from and what would help uh, get better funding or better sponsorship from people? Well, the funding, from, the funding from, from our point of view is why we're here today. So, so equally, we're, we're here today to see if there's an opportunity. Um, you know, generally we go out and look for sponsorship from, um, um, from, from businesses. So again, it's how we can, we can use that. But equally, it's looking, capturing into places like today, the, the, the lottery and local, local uh, councils and, and any other body that will, is able to. That. We've been lucky enough um, just recently to be awarded um, £400 from Essex Legacy 2012. So, so again, building into the Olympics and the legacy of that, and, and actually that's going to help us um, finance a new sound system on our float. So, so that's our legacy that we're going to take from the Olympics. So, you know. Great. I mean, if I could slightly cheekily turn to Kathleen <laughs> Pimbley, who's been helpfully holding Hello. the microphone, uh, but without trying to get any commitment from Big Lottery, which I know you can't get, give. But with these sorts of events, thinking about the criteria that you have uh, for funding, uh, what would be interesting to um, Big Lottery in this kind of a situation? 
I mean, again, I think this is something you know we could talk to in more depth from our small grants program, which is called Awards for All, and we do we do fund carnivals, but we we particularly it's just a question of getting the timing right because we have to have the application in three months before the event. But in terms of you know it's something new, it's something one off. I mean, if you do things slightly differently, that's definitely something we'd be interested in looking at I mean, from we, our small we, grants you know, program. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, for me, th th that was the interesting part from today really was that being the event is in September. I actually am well within that period of time. Equally, as a matter of trying to say, well, actually, link, look, linking in with uh, things that was being talked about, like carnival associations, you know, the, the arts is about whether you can get sort of these samba groups and all that. The real big interest today was about we equally want to think about building up a, a, um, an archive of old carnivals. And that instantly today came into the heritage loop which is about saying how do we get pictures how do we how we develop that type of history of because 94 years is a lot of years what we have found is a lot of people are saying i've got an old program i've got old photos it's a now how do we what do we do with that you know and because it's a living heritage as well that's something i'm sure our, our colleagues in heritage would be very interested in talking to you about definitely so, so without this event we wouldn't have actually understood that at all. I would have instantly said, that's heritage, a little bit like the presentation today said, it's about refurbishment of buildings or it's a church or whatever. I actually would have considered heritage in that, that. The minute they started to say it's about everything in the much more wider sense of heritage, that excited me to say there's a potential opportunity. One other bit of thing I picked up was uh, Peter Wanless saying that the funding decision committees uh, really would like to uh, people proposing funding to say more about the context, more about what's going on in the area, more about how they might work with other people. Carnival's a great way of bringing people together, so maybe you could help not just the carnival, but help other people know what's going on. I was, I was interested to actually understood sometimes about, uh, we, we've, we've started to identify a couple of smaller charities, um, uh, very much sort of a, a little cancer charity that's helping children by doing um, a Beads of Hope. So again, it was saying, well, how can we help that organisation in a much more greater? It gives us a focus of what we're trying to collect the money for, because we do street collections. That's where you know a lot of the fund will go and help, you know, giving donations to loads, loads of organisations. So, so there's that's important to us to be able to link that. I think the hardest thing with 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 all this is about. You know, not only thinking about what you ultimately want, because it's easy to, you know, up to a point of saying, oh, I want a few thousand pounds, but it's actually sort of trying to work out um, the, the whole route march of, of, of the start and the finish, and very much sort of how would you, I, I, I picked up a two, imp the impact and what would make a change. And, and that to me is, is setting in to say, they're the things I've got to say. How would I impact the community and what, why would it make a change to the community? Um, maybe if that's that's not just on the day, but you've got the chance to start planning that now. Absolutely. While you're working with these groups, means they get engaged. Maybe the young people could get involved in what would make carnival, you know, fun for you. So the process of organising the carnival actually helps groups think about their future, their funding, and so on. Well, we've uh, just written to some of the local schools because we want to the local schools have competition to design the front page of the programme. So again, very much with the Olympic theme involved in that, so the kids can actually start to design the programme. Once you get the children involved in that, they, they naturally have to drag mum and dad along to find it. That naturally brings the community together. And you're building all the skills and confidence along the way of different community groups. So, well, Absolutely, and I, and I think it is this issue, and, and what, I, what we say is about you know, Blackberries and, and, and Android phones and all the rest, how, the, how do we bring that type of, that type of technology into, into a carnival that people only see once, once a day or once a year? Carnival is, is, is a six months a year out the Whitford Carnival visit uh, lots and lots of other carnivals all over the all over Essex so it's not just a one day a year